Hey, everybody. It's Todd Conklin, and this is the Pre-Accident Podcast. Thanks for listening. Okay, today you're going to love it. Today, we're at the coal phase. Today, we're talking to a person who does the work. Today, we're going to talk about an amazing thing. It's the slip, trip, and fall simulator. Now, I'm sure if you've never heard of a slip, trip, and fall simulator, right now you're thinking, well, that, that sounds made up. But it's not, and it's remarkable, and it works. And it's crazy and people like it. And you all, the only thing you have to do is kind of get over the fact that you're about to go into a, a, a conversation. You're about to have thoughts about your workplace where you're seriously thinking about contemplating in very serious terms purchasing a slip, trip, and fall simulator. You need one. It made a huge difference at our facility. It made a gigantic difference at facilities across the country. UPS got a lot of national press time over this slip, trip, and fall simulator. And all it really is is, is it's, it's a way to simulate these conditions that are going to lead to a worker falling. Now, if your company's like every other company, slip, strips, and falls are a big issue. You can get people to do high-risk work when they're on the plant floor. You just can't get them from their car into the plant. That's what we're going to tackle. And this podcast is a much more applied podcast. We're not going to talk a lot about theory in this podcast. We don't need to. We can, but we don't need to. What we're going to talk about is how this podcast works. And I'm bringing to the table today Jim Kleinstuber, a good friend of mine, long friend of mine. We've worked together a long time in these very challenges. But I'm bringing him today because Jim is probably the best person in the world at this point in understanding how you can start a slip, trip, and fall abatement program with a slip, trip, and fall simulator. I, I, no one can touch him. He's got more knowledge on this topic than any 16 other people combined. Plus, he's a smart guy. Plus, he's a worker. Plus, he's done it a million times. Plus, he's got lots of experience. So listen carefully. I think you're going to enjoy Jim. He will take you on a journey where you will fall, but you will not land. So with no further ado, here is Jim Kleinstuber and the Slip, Trip, and Fall Simulator. What were you going to ask? I don't know where you want to go with this. I I mean, wherever it takes us. I mean, the great thing about this is um, we go where it takes us because who knows where we're going to go. I mean, to me, you have lots to say because you really represent this Slip, Trip, and Fall Simulator. And most people um, who are normal at any level by any standard – don't even know there is a slip, trip, and fall simulator. Okay. So that's where we should probably start that conversation that way. Okay. Do, do you know, did I tell you how I first found out about the slip, trip, and fall simulator? Have no. I ever told you that story? No. So I was speaking in a meeting someplace, and I sat by this guy, and he was from United Parcel UPS, and he said, you know, I, we were ta- somehow we were talking about, um, I don't know, slip, trips, and falls, I'm sure. Right, and he said, "Well, we have a slip, trip, and fall simulator," and I was totally making fun of him because I thought it was the goofiest thing I've ever heard of. And I said, "Well, we have one too. It's called February, right? <laughs> you know, because I mean, you talk about that ice." And they invited me to come and see it, and that's the first time. That's when they shot that video. That's when the, right. the first time. I still got happened. copies of that. You, oh yeah, I've got them on my computer. I won't let them go. I show them once in a while. Are you going to blackmail me? Is that no, the, no? But, because but that it, seems perfect for blackmailing. It, the other ones are are um, they've got lanol stuff all over them. The ones that we actually took at Los Alamos, and so I I'm not comfortable with showing those to other clients yeah, because but, that's not my property. But the, the the first one is wide open. I mean, exactly. That's, that's just and that's, that one every once in a while I'll pull out and say, okay, let, let me show you what so, it's about. So what is it you do? To talk about the slip, trip, and fall simulator because I think that's pretty interesting. Well, to begin with, we talked about you finding out about it through UPS. And, Todd, you and Bethany, uh, our former boss, and a lot of people went down to UPS, I guess, in Maryland and came back and were stoked. We're thrilled about this whole thing. Me, I was dealing with behavior-based safety at the lab, and I was doing my own training. I had my own niche. Um, I asked our boss, Bethany, who is going to train on this? And she said, you, me. Well, that wasn't – I was not pleased with that at all because, one, I was having a hard enough time getting a lot of the scientists who were brilliant up there talk to each other about safety 
or their employees about safety. Right. And right, now right. I was going to put them on a slip trip fall simulator and teach them <laughs> to walk. And you're just going, no, 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 this is not going to work. And so I was a skeptic from day one. Well, so so describe what this slip trip and fall simulator looks like. So assume most people that are listening to this haven't seen one. Okay. Uh, m- many will, I think, have seen them. And probably everyone should see them. Right. Uh, it's a really good idea. But describe what it's like. What's it look like? It is a uh, it's a, a couple of pieces of um, uh, I beam on in a on a U shape that hold a crane rail between it, and the crane rail has a moving trolley that moves back and forth. It's about eighteen feet long, and underneath the trolley is a floor setup that's made from now the new design is like a computer floor that has movable tiles, about two by two square tiles, and so the the idea behind this is to hook up an individual in the trolley with a five-point harness and a lanyard that keeps their fall distance at a certain level so it's not too far and, and, and really so they don't actually fall and hit the ground. So they fall, but they fall into the lanyard. Exactly. And then this, exactly. this crane rail that's nine feet ab- above their head or nine feet above the floor, I guess. It's only probably three feet above their head. That supports them. So they, exactly. they actually experience the fall without the – Without the consequence. Without the landing. Without the consequence. Right, so, okay. and, and then what we as trainers do, what I train the trainers to do, is set the conditions for these people to fail. It's, it's very unique in a safety world because most of the time in safety, you're saying, here's the defenses. We don't want you to fail. This one, we're actually setting the conditions to fail. We're slipping. We're putting wax on the floor, water on the floor. We've taken uh, stabilizers, which is a trademark uh, uh, shoe, overshoe that goes onto your feet that usually has some cleats on it to, to grab the ice. Well, we've removed the cleats and put on what they call magic sliders. And these sliders are nylon sliders, like furniture-moving sliders. Oh, yeah, you can get them at, like, Lowe's or Home Depot. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And you can move heavy pieces of furniture. Exactly. Okay, yeah. And so that modification of the shoes with the flooring and the wax and the water creates a condition that is literally has a uh, lower coefficient of friction than, than ice itself. Oh, that was fancy pants, coefficient of friction. <laughs> so what's your background? Are you a safety guy? I, I I am a safety guy. I yeah, started okay. out. Did you start out as a safety no? Guy? I started out as a sheet metal worker. Um, went up to Los Alamos National Laboratory on a two week call. Got involved with safety because it was the first place I'd ever worked where I thought the institution really valued safety. Coming from a hard money contractor in Albuquerque and spending ten twelve years in raw construction there, safety was not valued. Production was valued. Absolutely. And when I went to Los Alamos. That's the attitude I took until such time as I started looking at how the laboratory acted around safety. And there was a different concept there. I got involved with safety by teaching people. I, uh, one of my bosses had asked me to pay, take people through uh, a building and give them the emergency evacuation, give them a, a how-to of the building practices. So but you, so you're a tool toucher, right? You, yes. You, you, you touch tools. You're a sheet metal I, worker. Yep. And where would you get your Ph.D.? <laughs> <laughs> College of Hard Knocks. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but I think that's important, right? Yes. Because I think your voice is a really important voice in this discussion because you're really coming out of the grassroots, out of the craft side of the house, and you've really developed what's become quite a career for you. And I think it's interesting that it sort of is landing, at least currently, on this notion of slips, trips, and falls. It's our biggest problem. It. In in industry, it's usually in the top three. Yeah, uh, especially in the United States. One of the challenges, Jim, is that companies are so good at safety that lots of things that used to be big problems aren't problems anymore. And so anything that's easy to solve by mitigating it, we've solved it. Uh, that's a kind of a big statement. It's not true of everything. The problem with slip strips and falls is it's not easy to solve. There's not a mitigator I can go out and say, this will stop all slips, strips, and falls. It's, it's literally every square inch of your facility and every person times every minute of every day plus weather conditions. So the complexity of this is really a, it's a gigantic problem. I mean, it's a, giant, it's a problem that's really, really hard to solve. The, the joke I used to tell all the time is, I'd rather be in charge of the nuke criticality program than the slips, strips, and falls program because the new criticality program at least it obeys the laws of physics right yes so so that's a that's a real challenge 
um, what what value does this simulator bring? The, the, the question I'm trying to ask is, does it work? The, the answer is absolutely it works. And, and we, we talked a little earlier about my skepticism when you came back from UPS. Todd, the more I trained on it, the more you would see – a behavioral change based on the conditions, based on the sliders, based on all the things that we had set up. And every time I would see it, it reminded me of the first time I saw my son walk on, on two legs. He was crawling. He, you know, he would stand up against the couch, and he could stand on two legs. But at one point in time, he picked up a ball that he was rolling on, and something clicked in his head. He suddenly realized he was bipedal. And and that was it. That he never. I mean, he he would fall down, but there was something that triggered in his mind, and you could. I could. I swear, I could see it. I watched it happen. That same type of thing happens on the simulator when somebody's mind is changed, and and they get what we're trying to do in the training. And the fact that your son's bipedal, I guess you're excited now that he can get married. <laughs> yes. Am I getting? Is that what bipedal? Bipedal. Oh, yes. oh, you mean that they walk, they walk on, on two feet? Right. Because gravity's not our friend. No. I mean, it's, it's, it's really saying come down. And so, yeah, walking on two feet is, is really one controlled fall to the next. And so when you see it happen on the simulator, it's amazing. And, and I, I, the more I saw it and the more I saw, I saw the value in this because, again, the conditions we are creating is slipperier than ice. And, and, and you see people go from waving their arms and all over the thing to actually motivating or, or moving and, and – under control does it make it do do people fall less do do the number does it influence the organization's metrics maybe that's the word i want to use the data on that comes basically from united parcel service who is their uh, industrial biodynamics is who's now the company that makes the uh slip trip fall simulator i train for them under my own company name workplace safety advisors how do they contact you it depends. It depends on, you know, whether they get the lead or whether I get the lead. So if I wanted to call you, like I'm listening to this and I become interested in this slip, trip, and fall simulator, how would I contact you? What's your phone number? Give My phone, phone number. number is area code 505-604-0896. That's easy. Okay. I also have a webpage, WorkplaceSafetyAdvisors.com. Okay, cool. And um, either one of those would be a, a, an adequate way to contact me because there is a form on the web page to say for more information and you can fill out a form and then I'll get an email. Oh, okay, it sounds good. And so I can call you back. Should, should companies get this? Absolutely. Why? First of all, since slip trips and falls is one of the highest accident injury factors in business, whether it's in the West Coast or East Coast, particularly in the, the East Coast because of the weather conditions, but the average cost of a slip trip fall – accident isn't somewhere in the neighborhood between 30 and 40 K 30 and 40 thousand dollars per event. And that's not considering the long-term effects from somebody that's fallen. That doesn't con- you know, consider their, their families, the, the, that type of thing, what the cost is to the individual. That's just the company cost and the insurance cost paying for it. Um, the simulator is roughly if, if you, if you prevent two slip trip fall accidents by training your folks on this particular device, you're ahead. You're already ahead. The machine is paid for. And what we determined at Los Alamos, we, we kept two different rosters. We kept those that participated in the class because not everybody will get on the simulator. Sure. We, we know that right off the bat. Some sure. people have, there's some conditions that you have to, to uh, let the people know of. If you've had recent surgeries, pregnancy, those type of things, that's a, that's, that keeps you off the simulator. And then some people just do not want to get on it for whatever reasons they have. Sometimes it's they don't want to look like a fool in front of their friends because you're setting them up to fail and they're out of control. And that's kind of a nervous thing, especially – I've seen it with managers in front of their uh, staff a lot. Sometimes it's with coworkers. But, but basically, um, if you're saving two injuries a year – well, that was what I was going to know. Los Alamos, we trained over 2,000 people in my tenure there. And of those 2,000 that were actually on the simulator in two years, none of them had had a, a fall. And so you're going, that's pretty good results. What we're trying to deal with now is getting the data from companies because they're not likely to share it. And so what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is get them, give me the percentages. Don't give me the – obviously, I don't want the names. I don't want to who, who got hurt. But what is their percentage of safety based on the number of people that they've trained 
on the simulator since I've left. How, how come this works? I mean, what? so you've pretty much, your career, uh, at least a big part of your career, is going out and help helping companies get this started. And, and I agree with you 100%. The, the simulator is amazing. The training you provide to their trainers so that they can use the simulator is vital. It's everything. How, how come it works? Why are you convinced it works? Seeing it. Seeing is believing. But two, I, I trained a f- quite a few people at, at, at uh, Los Alamos. And then one day I was getting out of my car and I started to slip. And I thought, you're not practicing what you've been training. And really what it is, is if you're vertical on the ice and you're walking flat-footed, you keep a center of gravity and more surface area on your toe or on your foot than if a normal heel-toe pronation. Right. So really it's flat-foot steps. And that's what keeps the center of gravity over your or your body over the center of gravity. And, and your you're feet. really managing. So there's a tendency on slippery surfaces for people to skate their feet. Thinking, Absolutely. And that's bad because that causes them to slide because it screws with their center of gravity. Right. And and you see that when you when you train people that one are either skiers or those that have had uh, are proficient on ice skates. Yeah. They go right into that mode, and you're going, that's fine, but that's not what we're looking for here. <laughs> exactly. That's because, not- yeah, I mean, it, it really it, it indicates that they're prepared for the conditions. And a lot of slips and trips and falls are when the conditions surprise you. How, how big of a deal is it for a company to get one of these? It's not a big deal at all. It's about a six-week lead time. How long does it take to train people? Uh, generally, I like to put about 15 people in a training for about two hours. And so you train them – in groups of people, which is really smart because they've got that feed, that immediate feedback. It makes it more fun. They're Correct. laughing. They're yep. watching each other, and they've got that feedback. That, that's that's uh, really brilliant, actually. Here's another aspect of that, Todd. When the first few people get on the simulator, they're out of control. And and because we set the conditions for them to be out of control. Right, because the floor slippery, they're not and they've prepared. got these yes. slippery things on you their bet. feet. They're okay. not prepared for it. By the time the third or fourth person gets on the simulator, you can already see a change in their behavior because they've been watching their participant, their their coworkers get on, and they already start emulating or um, they start doing the walk immediately. And so it's it's kind of like I use the analogy in my training. It's like riding a bicycle. Once you learn how to ride a bicycle, you can go 15, 20 years, never be on a bicycle, but get on a bicycle tomorrow and the same kind of memory, that same kind of uh, forward, backward, that works as well on the, on the simulator. So you're going, okay, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you do it, it comes back to you when it's necessary because it's a marching type of step. Now, we don't expect everybody to go marching around daily. That would look very cool, but <laughs> I was going to say it might be fun to watch. I, I would like it, but but essentially, it's called when these conditions exist. This is what you do. So, really, what we're doing is perturbing your um, your mind. We're messing with your your mind. I like I like what you're doing because what you're doing is you're stopping asking people to not fall, which is absolutely just a giant waste of time. I mean, asking people to not fall or putting signs up to say "caution, parking lot is slippery." I mean, all those things I think are valuable but they don't really equate into a different behavior. You're actually, instead of stopping people asked to not, to not fall, you're actually changing the way they, they manage their center of gravity. Exactly. And it exactly. works. And you've got things like you've got pipes you can put across the walkway. You've got a ramp you told me about. Yep. Um, you've got a curb hazards. They can, you can make them hold a telephone. Yes. You can make them carry a box, right? All those things. Uh, that, uh, those are challenges that once somebody gets it, you're, what we're trying to do is separate those things that they do have control over, with the cell phone, the, the caramel macchiato, the coffee, from those things they don't have control over. And they caramel have- macchiato is different than coffee? Oh, it's so more you, expensive. You have a, a fancier cup <laughs> and, a, and a crappy, like one's yes. a mug that says world's best exactly. boss and one's a fancy cup with a one's, lid on it. I got you. And so we introduce those kind of challenges once somebody gets involved in it and they start seeing success in how they're, they're managing the, the slippery surface. Then we introduce challenges and say, one, you can do this with those types of things. But the idea behind it is to say what we want to do is when these conditions exist, Concentrate on the walk, not the coffee. Concentrate on the walk, not the backpack. Concentrate on your travel and not being in a hurry. And the cost of it is in the noise. It pays for itself. You're telling me that. I think what's interesting is that it's such a complex problem that what this brings to the 
to the floor is a different way to look at the problem. And I think that's really, really valuable. Well, and there's a lot of science behind it. I get to do the training, so I'm front man. But Dr. Thurman Lockhart, who was formerly from Virginia Tech University, Polytech University, is really the brains behind the whole thing. And they started doing this, one, for as UPS, their first client, because UPS was seeing a high slip trip fall uh, rate on their East Coast division. And, and basically that's because, I don't know if you've seen UPS drivers, everybody's seen him. They get out of the car, they barcode the, the item, they run to the door, they deliver the item, they barcode it there, they run back to the truck. They're always moving very, very quickly, and their conditions are always changing. And so they wanted a way, the way I understand it, to mitigate or reduce their slip trips and falls. After they had trained their entire East Coast division, they saw a 70% reduction in slip trips and falls in the first year. That's huge. Which is what you're seeing really with your other clients. Uh, exactly. Because you work with, we, we, I don't know if we need to say names or not. It's not that important. But you work with refineries. Yes. And factories, manufacturing. Laboratories as well. Labor- oh, yeah. I forgot about laboratories. Right. So you work with all these organizations that have this challenge. And I, at least I know in manufacturing, um, and it's certainly true. Well, like refineries, if I were going to invent something to trip people, it would look like a refinery. Because you have... Lots of weird piping all about six inches above the deck. You, you see it all the time in the maritime industry as well. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of ways to, to fail in this, and, and people are failing. I mean, it's, it's, it's what's going on. Those clients are seeing a, an improvement in a very complex problem. Yes. But the training matters. Absolutely. And so what you bring to the table is you'll help them get the simulator. That's, that's not a problem. That's just... It's just a machine. Right. I mean, it's just some stuff that comes in and you put it together and install it and test the crap out of it, right? Exactly. But what it really is, is the delivery of this message. Do people like it? Yes. Is it fun? Yeah, absolutely. It's fun. And and, and we try to make it fun because, again, you, you're putting somebody in a position to, to fail, but all the defenses are in place to lessen the consequence of that failure. And, it, and I try to ladle in as much human performance in that, in that kind of a respect. Well, it seems so, like it fits this new view idea. And you're pretty much you're, – you're a good expert on kind of this new view. You've been thinking about this a long absolutely, time. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I really get a kick out of, one, seeing the, 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 the training, like you said, is, is pretty much everything. If, if you're not training them correctly, we're going to send people back out on the street and we're going to see a failure model. But what's really important in the training, first off, is to do all of the safety checks. That is critical to me. Evacuation procedures, how right, do we get right, out of here? Right, right, all right. All of that is, is on, when I'm certifying a trainer to train on this machine, they need to know how to get their class out of here, what to do, those types of activities. And that, that has to be done perfect every time because the last thing we want to do is set up a slip trip fall simulator, have somebody injured on that, and that would be a critical blow to the whole training process as well. So all of the the steps that I've got, and they're listed. These are the checks you have to do every single time, and then you have to sign a uh, a, a checklist saying I've done these kind of a checks before, so that 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 the, the equipment is safe, so that we can now put people on it. Excellent. So what are we missing? What's your elevator speech? What's the one thing you want people to take out of this conversation? is that conditions are going to exist that we have no control over, whether it be snow or ice or water on the floor, and that, one, there is science behind this particular technique and that it works. And it, it works absolutely well. works well. Okay, one more time. How do I, how do I contact you? What, what do I need to do to contact you? There's either one of two ways. My phone number is area code 505-6040896, and I have a website, Workplace Safety Advisors.com. Sounds good, Jim. Thanks for your time, buddy. Right on. Did we do it? I think so. Did we miss anything? Uh, I was so proud of you by saying, <laughs> by saying a member of your family is bipedal. Right. I thought that's really this, guy, this is an earth shattering podcast. Well, isn't? some of the knuckle draggers, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your time, man. Thank you, Todd. Talk to you later. All and right. there you have it. That's the podcast. What do you think about Jim? Isn't it interesting? This is a human being who's dedicated his life. I mean, he's doing for a living. A job that I think is remarkable, and that is he's out in the world specifically focusing on slips, trips, and falls. And he does it with his simulator, which is completely worth your time. If you're not familiar with it, it's absolutely something you ought to look up on the web. It's amazing. And what's amazing 
is how well the stinking thing works. And it works great. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And Jim's ability to train people, to train people, to train people how to do it. He's, he's remarkable. He, he's also just a super nice guy. That was really a fun way to spend an hour. So I enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. That's pretty much what we want to cover. As always, subscribe, listen, tell your friends, and be safe.